This is the Frank Sontag Show. Thank you for joining us. My guest is Brian Head Welch, co-founder of the band Corn, and also author of Save Me From Myself, which was his book of about uh, nine or so years ago, and now his brand new book is called With My Eyes Wide Open. <sighs> How you doing? I'm good. I'm looking forward to this. these bodies of light spirit we're going to have one day. Do you see how fast the time flies? I mean, nine years ago I wrote that book. It's like we're going to be in glory before we know it. Mm. <laughs> and you know that. You know that. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah, it's not like a – it's 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 tangible reality for me. It's more real than this, than this realm that we live in. And, uh, you know, some people say don't be – uh, too heavenly minded, else you're no earthly good, and uh, and I I think that's that's a good statement. But um, I think you could be both. You can be heavenly minded and earthly good. Mm. So that's my focus. Mm. So much I want to ask you in so little time, but I want to make sure and emphasize we're blessed to have you in studio, mostly because you're out promoting your brand new book with my eyes wide open. Talk about the book. Why the follow up to save me from myself? And um, I know that your daughter, talk a lot about your daughter in the book. Yeah. Um, you know what? Both books, or all the books I wrote, there's three so far, um, they were not my idea. I didn't I didn't seek it out at all. But um, I had management, you know, God places people in your life to uh, give you counsel and everything. And I had management come to me for my first book, and he said, you know what, you're, you're so, everything's so controversial with you leaving corn and and, and the Christians and, and, uh, accepting you and like how that's all going to look and your fans want to know what's going on. So you need to write a book. And then the same thing happened with this book. Cause I went, I went back into corn and I go into great detail about the careful, careful counsel and, and, uh, prayer and thought that, that went into that because my whole story was walking away from that. And, and, uh, you know, I was away for eight years and then, I, I, I saw that God was leading me back to, to hang, hang around with the people that were just like me when he touched me. Like who else? They're not, a lot of those people won't end up in a church or won't step foot in, in any church. And so when I get out there, I just, you know, I put out stuff through the media, through whatever, through books or, you know, I got a, I got a feature film coming out next year too about my testimony and all of these kids are going to watch it, you know? And a lot of people don't understand why how I could go back because of the songs and the lyrics and you know t- to be honest sometimes I get frustrated with with people and uh you know I, in my books I explain that I'm not the most I haven't been the most emotionally stable so <laughs> so sometimes I get mad at people but I kind of understand them too because I I didn't see this coming but God's plan is so big and uh I know like if I could say 99 percent i know that i'm supposed to be there 99.9 i can't say 100 because i'm not god you know Mm. but um i know that he called me there and i always say lord if i'm anywhere in my life that i'm not supposed to be supposed to be please i give you permission like as a as with my will please break anything in my life and change anything in my life to get me where i need to be so yeah you're all in for jesus i'm all in I'm all in. I'll go anywhere and do, you know, whatever he calls me to. And so, yeah. And being your sense called back to the band Corn in that environment, I would imagine you are, I mean, you're, it's not as if people don't know you're Christian now. It's that people don't know somehow you follow Jesus. And people may, in a sense, hear the gospel for the first time in that venue that they would have never heard before. Yeah, and through all different kinds of ways. I mean, personal, after shows, all the time. Um, and then you can't reach, you know, masses like that. Um, so uh, through my books, through the, like I said, them, through, uh, through stuff I do online, always, it's always going out and through the movie next year. And, and, uh, I haven't figured out a way to do it on the microphone yet, but, <laughs> Lord. yeah, you know. I'll shoot for the stars. We never know. Now, I'm here to help if I can help you with that. <laughs> yeah. I've been in 30 years, and I still, every day, uh, it's hard to get on the mic. But all things are possible through him, and I say, Lord, just use me. Yeah. So That's amazing. How's your daughter? She's amazing. I, I uh, 
I shared in deep, intimate detail about raising her. The good times growing up when she was like, you know, six to 11, just, just amazing, you know, and I feel like I failed the most in my life. If I, if I was, if I regretted anything doing things wrong, it was with her because even when I did become a Christian, I, my anger and my rage sometimes would surface and my depression and she had to see some ugly things that she shouldn't have. And, but, you know, we had some great times together, great fun. She's a, she's, she's, she's a clown like me. And so we would just giggle so much. And, uh, but when she hit around 13 or 14, um, her mom out of her life and stuff. And, uh, she, she started getting really depressed and she started harming herself, um, cutting and, uh, suicidal thoughts, the whole thing, everything I feared about a teenage daughter with boys and everything. She started getting into that stuff early and I was freaking out. And, you know, I, I didn't know what to say sometimes to God. I was like, everything I prayed for my daughter is like the opposite is happening right now. But Jesus, you have the words to life. Where am I going to go? I'm not going to walk away from you because I can't. You're so awesome, even though I'm mad at you right now. <laughs> you know, I'm mad. I'm angry with you, God, because everything I prayed for you, for my daughter to you, is it's just like it seemed like empty prayers right now. But I know you well enough to know that Romans eight twenty eight is a true thing, and you will turn this around for good in my life, even though, you know, I'm watching my daughter shatter in front of my life, you know, right before my eyes. And so I put her into a boarding school. And ever since she went into that school, she is just amazing. And the, the people are like family to me. I bought a house right by the school. They helped me raise my daughter because I was trying to do everything myself. And so these people have helped me raise this kid up from a broken, shattered, suicidal, thinking, um, depressed, uh, you know, girl that was self-harming. And that's an epidemic in this generation, yeah. too, to this beautiful, confident, awesome, amazing girl. She graduates next week. Wow. That was a long answer, but I'm really proud of her, so thank you for letting me rant. <laughs> absolutely. No, absolutely. The book, book is called With My Eyes Wide Open. Brian Head Welch is my guest. So we've got about five minutes. Anything the Lord's put on your heart that you want to share in the next five minutes, how your life is now, you've talked a great deal about faith, you've been tested. I, I just think of how many of us as Christians, we don't really hit the really dark times where we cry out to him, make it through, and know he's real, without yeah. a doubt. So anything the Lord puts on your heart, I'm just grateful to see you again, my friend. Oh, you too, man. I just, you know... I love when Paul says that, um, uh, I just want to know him. You know, he's crying out. He's like, and uh, he's just writing with so much passion. You can feel it, you know, and I think it's Philippians. I'm still learning the scripture, uh, addresses, <laughs> but you know, he says, I want to know him. I want to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings to become one with them in death. So I might be raised from the resurrection of the dead. And, and you know what? It's just like we experience that now to know him, to walk with him. It's not, you know, it, we, we, we get consumed as Christians even as with TV and social media and stuff. And I'm guilty of it too. You know, iPhone, that's like, it's like my personal assistant, but it's also like a demon taking me away from God sometimes. Yeah. And so, I mean, I just think that he he went through so much pain to save us, but you know what? He died to have a relationship. And so I think we all need to be setting more time away to be with him, you know? He's so amazing. He's so beautiful. And you can, you know what? It says, come near to God. And James, it says, come near to God, and he will come near to you. And you can get so close to God that it's not just a, belief like oh i hope i'm in heaven one day i hope this is all real that you can be so at one with him it says that we are one spirit with him in in first corinthians 6 and uh that's staggering isn't it without a doubt one spirit with jesus and uh it's it's just if we get to know that union with him man when we walk through trials th there's just there's nothing that can knock us over because our foundation is built on the rock, like it says in Matthew. And uh, and so when when we get to that point where we're going to face death, we're going to be confident 
in him so much by walking through so much fire that we'll be able to minister to the nurses. <laughs> you know, I know that I'm dying right now, but you know, I know my God and he's going to take me from this body and, and I'm going to be with him. And I mean, I just want to be that confident when things get, when I walk to my death and I have to face it, I just, I want to be so secure. And so I'm, I'm getting that every year I'm gaining new ground. So I just want to speak to anybody out there that, you know, maybe you're not a follower of Jesus and, and this story, my story, you know, is just one of many. I'm not more important than anybody else, but it's touching you right now. And I just, I, I just tell you right now, I encourage you just to give Jesus your heart, you know. And if you're a Christian, you've been walking with him and, and maybe your, your faith isn't rooted and grounded like you want it to, like that you have that knowing, knowing that you're one with Jesus. I just encourage you to, to, to worship at home, you know, pray more at home and, and, and read the Bible. And also what helps me a lot is reading books. Like I'm going to read Frank's book. <laughs> He's going to give me a copy of it. And, uh, just these Christian books, it's like fellowshipping with Christians, you know, and if you're not a reader, listen to books and you will grow and you'll become so rooted and grounded, grounded and strong in your relationship with Jesus that nothing but will be able to phase you in life. So, I love you guys, man. I just want to grow in Christ more, just like all of us, you know. Mm. So good to see you. You look really good, Brian. Thank you. I appreciate that. Even with my uh, mishap, my dental (laughs) mishap that I just had. Absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) Brian Head Welch is the co-founder of the band Corn, and his brand new book is entitled With My Eyes Wide Open. Brian has a website, brianheadwelch.net. BrianHeadWelch.net, and again, his book available at all the usual outlets with my eyes wide open. God bless you, my brother. I hope and pray in kind of a, I won't say selfish, but self-serving way. I hope it's not another couple of years since I see you. It's always a blessing to have some time with you. You too, man. I mean, we, we, we come from similar backgrounds, and I am honored and so thankful that you helped me get the word out with the book, too. Um, we're, we're really excited. My daughter shared... You know, she allowed me to share all this hard stuff, and she put a note at the end of the book. So I'm, I'm believing for changed lives through this book. Amen. Amen.